bare enough to my PBC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another quick bite, living the word. Today our words are going to come from 2 Corinthians chapter 1. What are you laughing at? Anyway, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And uh, we're going to pick it up at verse 3 now. And I just want to read through verse, uh, we're going to read through verse 5. I'm going to pause there for a second in the midst of it, guys. And what's put it upon my heart this morning is uh, we were sitting around the table here. We're having a conversation and talking about in our in our area, we had, there's a tragic loss. A young boy lost his life to uh, some dogs that attacked him. And just uh, how so often in life we question those things. We go, why, Lord? And, you know, kind of think of this and just kind of, just kind of have some issues that way. And a lot of people question, you know, why would God, why would a loving God allow these things and stuff like this? And I want to share something with us this morning, kind of along those lines, talking about how we can go about dealing with these situations, not only for ourselves, but for others. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, it says, Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the Father, for the, <laughs> I'll try this again in English, sorry. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. So I want to stop there for one second. Who is God? He is the God of all mercy and the God of all comfort. Well, one of the things we have to recognize is sometimes the things that God chooses are merciful, even though they may not seem like they're good in our eyes, but they are merciful in God's eyes. They're merciful according to what God wants to do. And he's the God of all comfort. In other words, even in those tragic moments, even those hard times, he is the God of comfort. And it goes on and says, who comforted us in all our tribulation. And I love that. Everything he wants to comfort us in, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Now, listen. Why does he comfort us in our tribulations? So that we can comfort those in theirs. So we can go to those who are struggling with these things and say, listen, I know our God is merciful. We don't know what his choice in this is. We don't know why, but listen, God is comfort. He wants to comfort you in this situation. So many times in our lives when we run into something hard, rather than actually turning to the Lord for comfort in the hard, we actually turn to other solutions or we turn away from God. When in reality, we should turn to God because he's the one who can bring us comfort. And it says, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So he's going to comfort, we can comfort the same way God comforts if we comfort them with God. And then this is the point. And this, I think, really the, the crux of it all, what ties it all together, binds it all together for us, guys. It says, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth in Christ. So just as we understand, as our Lord and Savior suffered, so too we will suffer but a consolation is exactly why he suffered, that we can be comforted in those things. So that whatever may come our way, we can know, hey, this is not the end of the game. This is just yet a breath of life. This is, as, as James was said, this is a vapor. And we are looking for something far more permanent and something far more beautiful than what we are offered in this life. So I hope this encourages you this morning with whatever tribulation you might be going through, whatever comfort you might need. Just remember, as always, that I love you, we love you. God, oh, I did that wrong, sorry. God <laughs> loves you. God's got this. <laughs>